Audi, Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be discussing CGI anime films. Uh, the reason I'm discussing that is due to an upcoming film. If you're unaware, it has been six years since Studio Ghibli last released a feature film. However, there is an upcoming film that they're releasing called Earwig and the Witch, and it's coming out on the 30th of December in Japan on Japanese television. It's a television film. And you'd think, as a Studio Ghibli fan, that I'd be absolutely excited and pumped up for it. But if you take a look at it, you'll notice that it's a CGI film. Of course, a lot of people aren't happy about that. A lot of people think that it doesn't have the charm of a lot of other Studio Ghibli films. I would certainly agree with that based on what little I have seen. Um, but it could still turn out to be a very good film. I'll just have to see. However, I thought now would be a perfect opportunity to discuss a little bit of the history of CGI anime films. Of course, I'm not going to discuss every single CGI anime film, um, but I do want to cover what I consider to be some of the more important titles. And of course, what better way to kick off than discussing the very first CGI anime film. That being a film that was released in 2000, and it's called Alice. Uh, it's sp more specifically, it's a.li.ce. And if you take a look at this footage of it, um, it has a very crude look. It certainly doesn't hold up very well, and I would argue that even at the time, that it didn't hold a candle to many of the other CG animated films being released, uh, such as Toy Story, Toy Story 2, etc, etc. However, this film is historically important simply because of the fact that it is the first CG anime film. Following that, probably the earliest CG anime film that most people will be familiar with, it's Appleseed. Now at the time, Appleseed was seen as a massive technological jump. And I guess if you compare it to Alice, that there certainly is quite an improvement. However, considering how much praise it got at the time, I can remember checking out this film and finding it quite ugly. In particular, I found the lighting uh, to be quite unappealing. Um, and so that quite put me off the film. Didn't help that the story wasn't particularly good either. However, it is worth noting that they then made a sequel in 2007, Appleseed Ex Machina. And I actually quite like the look of this film. If you take a look at this movie, you'll see that it is a dramatic improvement over Appleseed. Only three years later, I might add. The lighting has been sorted out, the characters are more expressive. I think it's a much more visually appealing film. Now we're gonna jump ahead a bit. Uh, to 2013, which was when Toei Animation decided to release some CG anime films. The reasoning for this, I'm not entirely sure. I do have my own theories about it, and I'll discuss my theories uh, after I discuss these films a little bit. But starting off, we have Captain Harlock, uh, Space Pirate Captain Harlock. I believe it was released in some territories as Harlock Space Pirate. And it is a CG anime film. I believe at the time it was considered to be the most expensive film that Toy Animation had produced. And as much as I'm a fan of uh, Space Pirate Captain Harlock, I haven't actually watched this film. Uh, the reasoning for that being that they've taken out a lot of the story elements that I found quite appealing in the original series. Um, so as of today, I have not seen it. However, I have watched the trailer and you will notice that it has a very stylish look to it with a lot of very nice textures, some very dramatic lighting. Um, I do think visually the film looks quite appealing. Um, it's just that the story changes have put me off from actually watching it. It's worth noting though that I do believe this film lost money for Toei Animation. It didn't do particularly big in Japan, although it is worth noting that it did very well in France and incredibly well in Italy. I believe it became the highest grossing Japanese film released in Italy up to that point. I don't know if it's been beaten since then. After that, uh, you had Saint Seiya, Legend of Sanctuary. And Saint Seiya, Legend of Sanctuary is actually, I think, a bit of an improvement over Captain Harlock visually. As much as I liked the look of Captain Harlock, it didn't have a very anime look to it. Whereas Saint Seiya, Legend of Sanctuary actually has a more distinct anime style, particularly if you look at the faces of the characters. Again, I believe this film was quite expensive for toy animation, and I do believe they lost money. It didn't do particularly big in Japan, although it is worth noting that it did very well in Mexico and Brazil, where Saint Seiya is quite a popular franchise. It actually did quite well in China, interestingly. Now, I mentioned before that I'm not entirely sure why toy animation decided to make these movies and to put such a big budget towards them. 
and to do them in CGI. But I do have a suspicion, and my suspicion is that they were trying to crack the world market uh, in terms of animation. And to some extent they were successful. As I mentioned, that they were quite successful films internationally. It's just that uh, without that core base in Japan, uh, they did end up losing money. So up to this point, it seems like CGI anime is a bit of a failure. Uh, however, there would be a movie that would change that. And interestingly, it came out the same year as Saint Seiya Legend of Sanctuary, uh, 2014, and it was called Stand By Me Doraemon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Doraemon, Doraemon is a very popular franchise, uh, in, not only in Japan, but in various countries such as India. I remember seeing it for the first time myself when I was in France, uh, so it was quite popular there. And Stand By Me Doraemon is a CG anime film, but that is apparently meant to be quite tragic. Considering how unpopular Doraemon is in English, I haven't gotten the chance to watch the film. Um, but I do know that it left a lot of people in tears. And visually, it's quite an appealing looking film as well. However, the main difference here is how it performed in the box office. This film did incredibly well. It made $196 million worldwide. A lot of that came from Japan, of course, but it did incredibly well in a ton of different countries. And I believe as of now, it is the sixth highest grossing anime film of all time. So it was quite successful. Since then, we have seen a few other anime films produced. In particular, you'll notice that Netflix have been working with Polygon Pictures to produce a variety of CG animated films uh, for their service. I would argue that the animation quality of a lot of these films aren't to the same scale as theatrically released films, but it is an interesting note nonetheless. And it's also worth noting that in 2019, um, the legendary Lupin the Third franchise saw its first CGI animated film released, Lupin the Third, the first. I'm not sure what the first has to do with it, but I am looking forward to seeing this film. I've seen the trailer, it looks really good visually, except I'm not a particularly big fan of Jigen's art style in this film. Um, but I've heard very positive things about it, and I'm looking forward to checking that out. Now, I have a variety of thoughts when it comes to CGI anime films. It is very hard for them to be able to match the level of quality seen in many other animation industries, but they are starting to reach that. Many of these recent CGI anime films actually look quite good, and they don't have the frame rate issue that would quite often associate with anime television series. Of course, the question is, do I like this direction? And the answer is, not overall. Um, I do think that there are certain series um, where it's interesting to check out a CGI version of it. For example, Doraemon is quite interesting to check out, and Lupin the Third is quite interesting to check out. But in terms of the overall direction of the industry, I do hope that they continue to go down the path of 2D animation. I think it's a lot more stylistic, but more importantly, I think it'll be healthier for them uh, because they are a lot cheaper to produce than CGI films. Nonetheless, I am quite interested in checking out more CGI anime films. And I'd love to know your thoughts on them. What do you think of the films that I've discussed in this video? Uh, what are some CGI anime films that I didn't mention but you have seen and what are your thoughts on them? What are your thoughts on the impact of CGI on the industry itself? And of course I would love to hear any additional information you would have um, on this topic. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye bye.